And we're back here on the GSMT Baseball Podcast, bringing you our second segment for today, which is going to be talking about Grayson Rodriguez and his injury for the Baltimore Orioles. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so ensure that your question does get rid in the air. Please hit the link, gsmtpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it raises me a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get back into the show for today. All right, so our second segment is, of course, going to be talking about Grayson Rodriguez and his injury for the Baltimore Orioles. This is a really big story from last night. Warming up for his game, of course, for the Orioles. About five minutes before, Grayson Rodriguez felt something, I guess, in his uh, in his body and called over the trainers. And you could hear him mouthing, you could see him mouthing the words on the Orioles broadcast, I don't feel right. And five minutes before the game, he was scratched. Now, that's never good. Five minutes before the game, he was scratched. That's not something, you know, you really want to see. He was today, of course, placed on the injured list with a... Um, in, with a right lat slash terrace discomfort. So kind of his lat kind of armpit area, that's where the terrace is. So obviously it's not an elbow injury or an arm injury. That's pretty good. But still having an injury at this time of the year for for you know for a player as important to the Ordo success as Grayson Rodriguez is something that really is unfortunate and something that is bad for the Orioles team. Now Rodriguez has been an absolute mammoth for this Orioles team this year. I mean, really has broken out for them, become a frontline starting pitcher. Was in their farm system for a long time as a top-rated pitching prospect, but a lot of people, including myself, really never thought that he would be able to make the jump and become a great starting pitcher as he has. I always loved his velocity. I always loved the break in his pitches, but like most young pitchers who have great velocity, great break in their pitches, he didn't have much control. So, I really never thought that he would be able to develop that as much as he has, but he's been fantastic this year. I mean, he has a 3.86 ERA, which in the AL East is fantastic. 20 games started, really hasn't missed a start all year. 116.2 innings pitched, 130 strikeouts as well, which is already more than him last year. A key per nine of 10.03, a walk per nine of 2.78, which is down from last year, which is great. K percentage is at 26.5, which is also great. Walk percentage is significantly down from last year as well. So has really done a great job. His expected ERA, his FIP, all that kind of stuff, Sierra, they really don't tell the tale for much regression as well. It kind of seems like this is just who he is, and he's just a great pitcher. You know, of course, you added in Corbin Burns at the start of the offseason as well. So adding in Burns to this rotation that already now has a breakout candidate in Grace Rodriguez was a really great job, and the rotation has become one of their biggest strengths. The problem is now the injuries with their rotation, like a lot of teams have faced this entire year. I mean, not only you've had Grayson Rodriguez, but before him you had Kyle Bradish go down, who was your number two starter, John Means, Tyler Wells, all for the season. Kyle Bradish was the most significant one here, as he was your was your number two starter all of last year, or one starter I should say actually for last year, was having a fantastic season this year, had a fantastic season last year, and the fact that he did go down with Tommy John not only affects you this year, but for next year as well. So, with Rodriguez out now, your rotation is going to look something like Corbin Burns, Zach Eflin, Trevor Rogers, Dean Kramer, and Keegan Aiken. That's not horrible, but it's a pretty it's a pretty long it's a pretty far cry from where you once were at this rotation. I mean, Rodriguez now being out for 15 days, I do think is really significant. The good thing is, though, again, it's not an elbow injury; it's an arm and arm injury, so it doesn't seem like he's going to be spending much time in the IL after the 15 days. I would think it's going to be around three weeks to a month, which is also which is bad. I don't want to make it make it seem like oh it's nothing, it's you know fine. Every pitcher deals with it. No, it's bad. But the fact is, when you're a pitcher, you are just going to have injuries, and you kind of have to deal with these things. And the fact that it doesn't look like it's going to affect him in the playoffs and in the long term as well is something that is really really good for this Orioles team. When he is healthy, though, I mean, Manis rotation will be fantastic. You're going to have Burns, Rodriguez. You're going to have Zach Eflin, Trevor Rogers, and then probably Dean Kramer as the five. I mean, if you were fully healthy this year, you could have a rotation of Corbin Burns, Grayson Rodriguez, Kyle Bradish, Zach Eflin, and Trevor Rogers. That would be absolutely incredible. So I really like what the orders are building here, and I really like the rotation. Now, again, having this Rodriguez injury is a setback to this team, definitely 100%. That's obviously true. But I think the depth they have right now is really good. And getting through this with a month is fine. Now, if it is significant after that in the playoffs, I think that's worse um, because you don't, your number two starter is really going to be Zach Eflin, who's fine. But after that, you're going to have to rely on Keegan Aiken and Trevor Rogers to make significant starts in the playoffs, which is fine. But they aren't exactly 
big time guys that you really want to fully rely on. So with the Soros team, I'm really hoping that Grace Rodriguez can um, can't get healthy, can't get much better, and it's not too significant of an injury where it's going to affect him for the rest of the year. I think that Rodriguez has been one of the biggest breakout candidates in all baseball this year, has been an absolutely fantastic, fantastic player, and I'm really hoping that he can become the ace-level pitcher that the Orioles want and stay healthy. Again, very good, good, very good news that it's not his arm, not his elbow, but again, having any kind of injury right now is something that you are going to have to worry about and it's something that you are going to have to monitor for the rest of the year. Now, going over the Soros rotation, I mean, man, did they really just overhaul this at the deadline. I really love what they did. I know they got a lot of flack for not going all in at the deadline. I mean, they could have probably gotten a guy like Tarek Subal at the deadline, but was he really ever going to be available? I don't think so. And, you know, I personally would have put up all the prospects for Scooble. I think a Scooble burns, Scooble burns Rodriguez, Eflin, Rod, uh, Rogers rotation probably would have um, made the Orioles um, immediate World Series favorites. I probably would have given them a trophy the next day if they got Scooble. But, you know, I don't think he was really ever available, so I can't really fault them for not getting someone like that. I can't really fault them for getting, you know, maybe a better player in Jack Flaherty because, of course, he has history in Baltimore. He didn't do great there last year, so I think it makes a lot of sense for the Orioles to not really want to go down that path again. So, looking at it then, they got still a really good starting pitcher. They got Zach Eflin. And not only is Zach Eflin a great starting pitcher, he didn't cost anything too significant with the prospects. He has played in the playoffs multiple times in his career with both the Rays and the Phillies. And also, he's under control for next year. So I love that Eflin move. I, I enjoyed the Trevor Rogers move for you guys. Of course, we got to say it every time we bring up Trevor Rogers, but they gave an insane amount for him. They I mean Stowers and Norby was an insane, insane amount, but also both were kind of excess goods on such a great team. I probably would have held out their value for something bigger, but obviously they like Trevor Rogers. Obviously they see something in him, so it's going to be interesting to see how he does develop as a pitcher for the Orioles long term. When you're looking at him, I don't really think that that's I don't really think that he's someone you look at and determine the trade if it's a win or a loss by this year. You look two or three years in the future and see how he's pitching with the Soros team because that was really a move for the future, not just this year as well. Of course, he is going to help you this year in the playoffs. I'm sure he'll be your number four starter, but overall, it's really more of a move for the future for this Orioles team. So, yeah, I still love this Orioles team. I still love the rotation they have, um, you know, there are some question marks about them, including their bullpen. Having Craig Kimbrell as the um, as the closer for you guys isn't great. He's been a little shaky recently, and I'm just not sure how much I trust him. But he is a veteran. He knows how to get it done at some point. So I would probably move Yanir Cano there, but that's just me. Um, I like the bullpen upgrades you got at the deadline as well, including Sir Anthony Dominguez. Gregory Soto hasn't done the best with you guys so far, giving up eight earned runs in one inning. But still, I like I like what he's able to bring. I like the I like the arm talent he has. So I don't think it was a horrible move. So, yeah, I think the Soros team is going to be one of the most fascinating to watch the rest of the year. Their battle with the Yankees to win the AL East is going to be really really interesting, and I think that it's going to be one of the bigger storylines of this entire year. And just be able to see how this ends up is going to be really really fun to watch as a baseball fan. I'm very excited to see it, and I'm very very interested to see. Just overall, what is going to be happening with this Orioles team, this Orioles rotation, and just this Orioles team in the future as well. I mean, I really think that Soros team is a dynasty in the making with the amount of young, incredible talent they have is just honestly insane. They have even more guys coming up as well. Heston Kerstad hasn't gotten a full share yet. Samuel Basalo hasn't gotten a full share yet. So once those guys come up, Man, is this Orioles team going to be fantastic? And wow, the young talent they're going to they're going to have is just going to be absolutely monstrous. So that is it for my second segment here, going over Grace Rodriguez and his injury for this Orioles team. Moving into our third segment here, which is going to be talking about the Bristol Motor Speedway game. It was announced yesterday that it will be plans to have a game at the famous Bristol Motor Speedway for NASCAR for next year. So I'll be going over that and give my thoughts on it. And yeah, we talk about it and I'll see you after the break. So thanks and bye.
Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, 